G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a uh, update, I guess, on some of the trade rumors that are swirling throughout the AFL right now. I was planning to do a sort of trade predictions update uh, at some point pretty soon, and then as it turns out, I've woken up this morning and uh, we've got some juicy rumors to discuss for you. Most notably, probably Tom Barras of the West Coast Eagles, um, where there's a bit of a rumor breaking out that a move to Sydney may be on the cards for him at the end of this season. There's a bit to unpack with this. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, Orazio Fantasia and then some other smaller deals, including, you know, Port Adelaide Scott Lysette. Port have their own um, sights set on a replacement ruck from Brisbane, it seems. Um, we can talk a little bit about Essendon's strategy, Richmond's strategy, and then a few Gold Coast players that got, might get prized loose at the end of this season. I will give a quick shout out to our sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, Manscaped.com, for all your male grooming needs. You can head to their website, Manscaped.com, and you can get 20% off and free shipping on on all their elite products. All you gotta do is use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Get yourself the Lawn Mower 4.0, which is the uh, state-of-the-art body hair trimmer that you can use on your body to get the job done quickly and easily. It's ceramic bladed, the battery lasts 90 minutes, and it's waterproof. You can use the shower, but there's a whole heap of other products. So go and browse the website and enjoy that discount. But yeah, I guess we'll start off with the biggest potential deal uh, first up in this video. And we'll talk about Tom Barras potentially making his way to the Sydney Swans at the end of this season. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard this particular link in recent times. I think it was back at the end of 2021 where Sydney were making a fairly big play to get, in my opinion, one of the better key defenders in the league. And I know I'm an Eagles fan, but as it turned out, uh, Barras ended up signing a five-year deal, I think, with the West Coast Eagles on big money as well, which will make him probably one of the highest earned players. Uh, not right now. I believe his deal is probably going to be back-ended because in the future coming years, the Eagles are going to have a bit more salary cap. And Barras is actually actually one of the few players that I can remember that has actually gotten better after signing an enormous contract because at the end of 21 he wasn't quite the player he is now last year could conceivably have been all Australian key defender I think he might have just left his uh, his form run a little bit late in the season and missed out but for the most part he's continued that season if you watch him closely the Eagles obviously concede an avalanche of inside 50s every game and the guy's an absolute monster so we're talking about a genuinely elite player so to give you the context and exactly what the the newest rumor is obviously he signed this massive deal but Sydney still seemed to be lurking and I'd imagine uh, what's changed is that the Eagles since the end of 2021 have obviously fallen to be a bit of a basket case in the league right now and a player of the of the caliber of Tom Barras would rightfully be considering do I want to spend the next you know three or four years left of my contract the final years of my career at a team that is probably not going to be seeing finals in that time frame so I can understand that from his uh, perspective I suppose and Sydney obviously would see the door open a little bit as an opportunity to get a high performing key defender obviously that's been an issue for them this year with uh, the McCartan brothers being unavailable and even still it's an undersized backline and uh, Tom Brass would slot straight into that team and improve them straight away they're also kind of in the premiership window Sydney obviously the runners up last year probably going to miss finals this year uh, with their list demographic is an interesting one it's almost as though they've probably competed for a flag a little bit earlier than we expected because the list demographic is still pretty young there so they're kind of in limbo a little bit where they're probably a little bit young on paper to be competing for premierships but they're certainly good enough to at least get close so Tom Barras ticks that box for them so the ball is in West Coast court uh, quite entirely in this particular scenario you know, Tom Barras can you know plead and, and say you know I want to move to a established uh, premiership contending club in Sydney for the rest of my career and West Coast given that he is contracted for another three years have every right to just say no that doesn't mean they will um, and this will be very very interesting because West Coast by their nature have become a very conservative club in terms of these off-season moves and forcing out arguably their best player um, to uh, gain some draft capital would be an uncharacteristically aggressive move for them and that's what it would be if this deal happens it's because West Coast wanted to Sydney obviously have some other options to bolster their back line obviously there's a few free agents etc um, you know Harry Himmelberg obviously is a forward but Ben Mackay and Tom Dode are free agents this year as well and conceivably be targets for the Sydney Swans and being free agents they wouldn't cost any draft capital Tom Barras would have to get traded and so Sydney would have to stump up a reasonable deal now part of the what weighs into this equation here as well is that you'd imagine West Coast as a rebuilding side would probably be offering up a little bit of, uh, of a 
chunk of Tom Barassa's salary. In other words, the Eagles would pay a portion of Tom Barassa's salary to go play at Sydney. And the benefit of that is that Sydney may be more willing to offer up a generous trade offer to make this deal work. And for where West Coast are at, you know, you could certainly make the argument that more draft capital at the moment is exactly what they need to catch up on years of missing out on the draft. I watched a video recently that said over three drafts, I think it was 18, 19, and 20, the Eagles took only seven players in the draft and um, two of them are project rucks and another one is a half decent midfielder who may or may not make it. So obviously the Eagles need to, to trade into the draft is well documented and that's why this temptation might be there for them. As a fan, I don't know how I feel about it yet because obviously, you know, we've seen West Coast compete fairly well in their most recent performance against St Kilda and you can see how that would actually help player development. But obviously the, the two months before that were awful and you take out our best defender out of that equation and suddenly I don't know if it helps us as much as uh, as you may think it does by getting um, you know a draft pick which we haven't even discussed what that draft pick would be so given that the Eagles you know have the bargaining power in a sense here they're likely to ask for a pretty generous draft pick. So Sydney currently hold pick six in this year's draft. I don't think it's going to cost less than that. And to be honest, I think pick six for Tom Barras on its own is a pretty good deal for Sydney. Sure, call me biased, okay, but Tom Barras is an elite AFL defender. And uh, I can think of two players just off the top of my head who were traded for pick six. I don't know why I remember this. Uh, but Adam Chera and Dion Prestia were both traded um, in the last few years to their new clubs for pick six. Both of those players were not elite players when they were traded. And so the Eagles asking for pick six outright um, absolutely is fair enough. And as I said, they've got the bargaining power, but this is the problem I have with pick six. It's pick six right now, right? So Sydney could obviously improve. And out of that bottom half chunk of teams that are pushing up for finals, still like vaguely in contention, Sydney to me seem the most likely to jump up and maybe not make the eight, but get close to it. So you factor that in, you factor in Ben Mackay and Harry Himmelberg are likely to switch clubs at the end of the year, or so it is reported. So that's two band one compensation picks that will push Sydney down two picks to begin with. So that six becomes eight, then there's at least one academy player who's probably gonna get bid on. So that's now really pick nine in essence. And that's before you consider Sydney might improve. So this pick six might actually be pick 11 or 12 on draft day. So straight off the bat, you know, the, the pick six offer is not as good for West Coast as it may seem. And I don't know if Sydney would be willing to pick part ways with you know two first rounders so west coast if, if i was west coast i would be aggressively trying to get logan mcdonald if you've been watching the channel for a while you know he's the guy that i want west coast to chase but let's be realistic sydney would have to agree to that and on top of that logan mcdonald would have to agree with that and i don't really believe on any level logan mcdonald really wants to come to west coast right now in 12 months give us a chance to regroup and and show the talent that we have which i believe is still there under the surface sure but logan mcdonald is not going to want to switch clubs but that is certainly the uh, I, this is our opportunity to ask the question but anyway that's just my thoughts on tom Barras in particular um i am probably leaning towards not wanting it to happen but that doesn't mean it won't happen so let me know in the comments what you think of that particular deal we'll move on to essendon who are likely to be a big player in this year's trade period Period for a couple of reasons. They're a young upcoming side. Um, they're one of the younger teams uh, going into this year. In fact, they were the second youngest ranked list in the competition at the start of the year and the fourth least experienced. And yet they find themselves uh, there in, in the finals uh, currently and potentially uh, around that mark by the end of the season too. So there's that. The young up and coming side wanting to potentially top up to move up the ladder. And they've apparently got a couple of million dollars in the bank to splash out on a free agent or trade target. So that makes them a bit more attractive as a destination this off season. And we know that, you know, in recent years, they've missed out on a few big targets. I think Dugowie, uh, reportedly Zerha, Harry Mackay, uh, Josh Dunkley as recently as last year, and they've they failed. But I do think the the uh, attractiveness of Essendon right now is probably higher than what it has been in the last, you know, well, God knows how long. But it seems to me, you know, they're, they're playing with, with purpose. They've got um, they've got really good standards you, you feel like under Brad Scott because of the youth and because of the talent you do think they're up and coming and on the rise and of course they've got a, a fair bit of money in the bank to pay players too so some of the players that they've been linked to are Ben Mackay of North Melbourne uh, potentially Ben King as well I don't think he's out of contract this year I think he signed for a couple didn't he so maybe not this year but potentially in the future but then Harry Himmelberg as well as a potential forward line option um, because we do know that they do rely a fair bit on Peter Wright yes they've done exceptionally well uh, without him this year but on paper you know you probably want a little 
bit more depth in the key forward stakes. So long story short, Essendon is going to be a major player this offseason. I'm intrigued to see what that looks like and perhaps they would be the best suited for a player like Ben Mackay. But that sort of flows on to another uh, trade story that has broken today, um, which is that Orazio Fantasia uh, reportedly has been linked to a shock return to Essendon after leaving Essendon for Port Adelaide on the basis of homesickness a couple of years ago. And I think this has come from The Age and it's been reported that he supposedly told his uh, ex-teammate Zach Merritt that he wants to come back to Essendon because he's not really getting the opportunities at Port Adelaide. And Fantasia was one of those players that I thought at the start of the year was almost like this forgotten talent that was going to come back in. And it was actually one of the reasons I thought Port Adelaide might rise up the ladder. But as it's turned out, they're doing just fine without him. And generally in his stay at Port Adelaide, he hasn't really cracked too many games. I think it's only been 24 games or something like that since uh, his contract started. It's been a story of both injury for Fantasia and a little bit of form as well. Um, But to play only 24 games since the start of 2020 is certainly going to be a little bit less than he wanted. So there is a chance for Fantasia, who reportedly still owns property in Melbourne, for him to return to Essendon as that live wire small. It'll probably be a cheap deal as well, considering I believe he's out of contract and he hasn't been playing too much footy. So that's one to watch for us. We can talk a little bit about uh, Richmond's draft strategy and they've been a team I've been zeroing in a little bit on throughout this year in terms of their future. Obviously, I've made the point that they kind of topped up uh, for a real crack at finals this year after having made the finals last year and it certainly hasn't gone to plan and what's happened as a result of the Toronto and Hopper deals is they didn't have a first round pick last year and they currently don't hold one in this year's draft but it is being reported that they're aggressively coming up with ways to try and deal with Gold Coast for Gold Coast first round draft pick this year and I've hinted at this in previous videos but Gold Coast with three potential top 15 Uh, Northern Academy prospects in this year's draft that they will have to match bids for may be quite willing to trade down pick six to try and accumulate more points and this is where Richmond comes into the equation. So the Tigers don't have a pick before pick 31 this year and in a strong draft that's less than ideal and Gold Coast first round pick currently sits at pick seven and they've got uh, three Academy players that are very very good prospects by the look I think it's Jake Rogers, Jed Walter and Ethan Reid as well all could potentially be you know two of those might be top 10 and Jed Walter could get bid on at pick two. So the Gold Coast Suns need to find ways to accumulate picks and that's where Richmond can try and offer a bevy of later picks um, which they currently don't even really hold but as it's being reported Richmond are going to make a serious play for that pick seven to try and rejuvenate their list with a bit more young talent. Just on the top of the Gold Coast Suns there's a few players as well that may be gettable this offseason. It's been reported that Sam Flanders and Elijah Holland's two uh, first round draft picks out of Victoria uh, back in like 2018 and 19 respectively I think or it might have been the same year I forget off the top of my head but two former first round draft picks that Gold Coast may see as expendable as they're trying to accommodate these uh, three Northern Academy prospects those guys haven't really set the world on fire and may be underappreciated talents that could thrive in Victoria as well so a lot to play out on the Gold Coast side of things as there so often is but let's hope they don't do something stupid like offer pick seven and a player then there's a number of uh, smaller little stories um, regarding Port Adelaide's uh, Scott Scott Lysette, who um, obviously has been a little bit out of favour this year, hasn't really had the uh, a great run of form, let's be honest, and Port Adelaide's ruck stocks outside of him are a little bit thin. So Lysette's about 31 and in, in theory is still got some years left uh, playing at the top level. So you'd imagine that a suitor for him might be uh, an established team uh, potentially competing for a premiership. Specifically, it is it reportedly Collingwood that is interested in Lysette, um, perhaps as a depth. I mean, you've got Darcy Cameron there, but they've had a, a whole heap of injuries to Tall's this year in particular. Uh, Mason Cox has missed a bit of footy. Darcy Cameron, as I mentioned, Aiden Begg as well. Um, and in the opening month, I think they were missing all three of them. So Collingwood reportedly interested in bolstering their ruck stocks and uh, Port Adelaide will need to replace Lysette as their own ruck stocks haven't been uh, super proven. Obviously, you've got Bryn Tickle who played a little bit in defense and then I think he's injured now. Uh, then they had Vicentini only just debuted. Sam Hayes is apparently a, a strong young rock prospect outside of the league, but again, he, ha- he can't really get a game at the moment. So long story short, Port Adelaide have been linked to Brisbane's Darcy Fort who has played a solid role for the Brisbane Lions over the last couple of years, but has only played in six games this year and in four of them, he was subbed on or off. So a bit of 
movement on the big man front as there so often is there seems to be always rucks um, lower level rucks tra trading clubs this time of year so a bit to play out on that front it'll be interesting to see what happens and finally uh, Asafa Radagalia the, the trade murmurs won't quite go away if you remember that he was linked to Port Adelaide at the end of last year but it was one of those deals that fell through and didn't happen at the end um, and he's put together a solid season in the back line for Geelong this year he is at a contract uh, but regardless he is not a free agent as such so Port Adelaide would need to trade for him somehow the alternative is that they let him walk into the preseason draft um, which doesn't really happen that often from the port side of things uh, obviously Alir and Lear and Trent McKenzie have been their key defenders this year Tom Jonas has found himself in and out of the side as well so they're obviously looking to bolster their tall stocks and Asava could be a cheap way to bolster that part of the field anyway guys that was just a little summary of the trade deals swirling or the the trade room is swirling at the moment uh, let me know in the comments what you uh, what you agree with and what you disagree with out of what I've said in this video if there are any other rumors that you've heard I've heard another a new big footy one that the Eagles are potentially interested in Paddy Dow fantastic but I'm sure there's heaps more twirling like that so let me know in the comments what your thoughts are subscribe to the channel if you haven't already that would be uh, much appreciated the numbers are a little bit down in terms of channel growth so if you do anything to help me there that'll be much appreciated but anyway guys appreciate you supporting the content and I'll see you in the next video cheers